Hello everyone, this is Ankit Jain. I welcome you all to my channel Take Journey with Ankit. In today's quick tech session, we will try to understand the concept of change data capture. How we can use the change data capture to exchange the data between the two different systems. I'm planning to divide this session into the two part. In the first session, we will go over the basics of the change data capture. And in the second part, we will cover more advanced concepts like how to create our own custom channel. Let's try to understand the agenda for today. In the today's session, we are going to start with what is streaming API, how the streaming API is different from the REST API. After that, we will deep dive into the CDC, try to understand the different use cases of the CDC. And after that, we go and enable the CDC in our org. After that, we also try to understand the payload structure that has been generated from the CDC. In the last, I will show you the demo as well by using the different Salesforce tools. So let's get started with the first topic that is streaming API. Now what is streaming API? Streaming events are nothing but the instant notifications that we are sending from one system to another system. That notification can be sent based on any CRUD operations or that notification can be sent whenever there is a need to exchange the data from one system to another system. Again, this streaming API, it basically comes in four different flavors. At the higher level, we can categorize as the legacy as well as the current. Again, Salesforce has stopped doing the advancements in the legacy streaming APIs. That is nothing but the generic and the push topic. However, now the Salesforce do recommend that whenever you are doing any future development, you should either go for the platform event or the change data capture. So we will try to understand how we can use the change data capture in today's session to exchange the data by using the streaming API. Before we move further, let's try to understand the difference between the streaming API as well as the REST API. You can take a simpler uh, analogy here that REST API is something which we use whenever we are performing any conversation. For example, we are sending the request to the server and after that we are expecting the response. However, streaming API is like watching a movie where the one event will come after the another event immediately without waiting for the response. Right? So streaming APIs architecturally it is totally different from the rest api they are very helpful whenever you are looking for the long running request you want to keep the request open and you want to accept the risk accept the data from the another system so if we have to deep dive into the differences architecturally as i said the rest api is based on the client server architecture however the streaming api here the connection with the streaming server is open for the long running request and the event. So whenever you do have a kind of a requirement where you have to send the request and looking for the response, you should go for the streaming API. But whenever you do have a requirement where whenever any action has been done on one system, you have to send the uh, data to another system. The best approach is to go for the streaming API. In the case of REST API, the connection is automatically closed once you have received the response. However, in the case of streaming API, the connection is not closed unless and until you, the developer or the user manually go and unsubscribe the request. So unless and until the request has been unsubscribed or the connection has been unsubscribed, till that time, you can send the data by using the streaming API. And another very, very important difference in between the REST API and the streaming API here is your REST API is stateless. However, your streaming API is stateful, right? In the case of REST API, we have discussed many times in the past, it, it is stateless, but you can cache the data. There are different mechanisms to cache the data. However, the good part about the streaming API here is it is stateful, right? Another advantage of the REST API here is REST API do support the different response format. But again, in the case of streaming API, we do have the limited response format as compared to the REST API. One example of the streaming API that I like to highlight here as most of you are already familiar with the social media platform like the Twitter or Facebook, right? Whenever they have to share any real time information to you, they go for the streaming API. For example, let's say you are subscribing to one channel or you are, you are following one person, right? In case they are posting something new on the social media, we all get notifications. Again, it's all because of those streaming APIs. So let's try to deep dive into the one of the streaming API for today's session. That is the change data capture. Right. So change data capture is one of the streaming product as I highlighted in the previous slide that can works on the lightning platform with the help of which you can perform the integration between the different Salesforce system and the external system. 
with the help of streaming api whenever any event has been done on the object that event can be either a create a record update the record delete the record or undelete the record what you can do here is you can send the notification or you can send the data from the salesforce system to external system so with the help of change data capture you can uh, keep the two system in sync with the you can go and keep the two system in sync by synchronizing the records in the external system one key thing that you should understand about the cdc here is in the case of cdc we only share the delta information for example let's say you have one record already available in the salesforce org right on that record user have only changed the two fields rather than you go and share the complete payload of the data what you will be sending with the help of cdc that two fields data that user have changed same goes for the creation of the records as well during the creation of the record if you have populated only four fields right the system will send the only four fields to the external system so always remember folks whenever you are dealing with the cdc cdc always publish the delta of the salesforce data right and again whenever we have to share the data with the help of cdc there is always an event bus this event bus uh, either designed in the combat d technology or by using the pub sub api nowadays salesforce do works on uh, making the pub sub api uh, to work on the event bus right but again as of now based on my knowledge uh, still the event bus is designed based on the combat d technology so again you can publish the messages on this event bus you can also subscribe the messages to this event bus as well in today's session we will be seeing how we can publish the message in the upcoming sessions we will see how we can subscribe the messages by using the event bus and also how we can write down the test classes as well because most of the times i do see that people do get struggle how to write down the test classes whenever they are using the cdc so these are the few applications that i have highlighted here that that when you should go for the cdc again most of the times i have observe that people do get confused whether they should go for the platform event or the cdc so always remember folks you should always give a priority first to the cdc in case you have to share the data on any crud operation right so cdc basically whenever you have to receive the notification of the salesforce record changes whenever the user have perform any crud operations on the data and you have to share that data or you have to send the notification then you should go for the cdc right whenever you have to capture changes for most of the fields right again you can go for the cdc whenever you have to send all the fields for here the user have make the changes you can go for the cdc next thing here is in the cdc you can get the information about the event header in the event header you can have lots of information for example on which object the change has been done what kind of operation has been done whether a create update delete or undelete everything is available in the event header down the line we will see the payload where we will understand how the event header looks like right again the good part about the cdc here is most of the times in one single transaction we do perform multiple operations on the data for example on one single transaction you are creating the record down the line you are also updating the record so what the cdc will do here is when more than one operation is the part of the same transaction then the cdc perform the update by using the same transaction boundaries right uh again the few of the more difference here and the key point here is whenever you are sending the data by using the change data capture the data will be retained up to 3 days you can get access of that data for, by using the 3 days in case your external system is down what they can do here is they can re still request the data from the last 3 days that they are that they should be receiving from the event bus now the question comes how we can enable the objects for cdc again it's a very simple what you have to do here is you have to navigate to the setup and here you have to go to the change data capture after that you can go and select what all different objects that you want to enable again here you can go and enable the standard objects as well as the custom object let me quickly take you to the org to show you how we can do that i am on the setup and here what you can do here is you can go and look for the change data capture now whatever the objects that you have to enable for the uh, for the change data capture you just have to go and select those objects and move it under the selected entities you can see that these are the three different objects that i have moved from available entities to selected entities in case you wants to add any new another object you can just go and do it as simple as is and then save your changes like this 
right so you can enable the standard objects as well as the custom object now now change data capture event can generate the change events for all the custom objects that you have defined in your org again it will not generate events for all the standard objects salesforce have provided the detailed list what all standard objects will be supported by using the cdc so you definitely go over the documentation and get that list i will put that link in the video descriptions as well right uh, but again as i said you can enable all the custom objects for the cdc here now coming towards the next part what will be the change event name in case you are enabling the cdc for the standard object then the change event name will be the standard object name followed by the change event for example if i am enabling the cdc for the account object then my change event name will be the account change event similar goes for the custom object in the case of custom object the event name will be the there will be additional underscore here in between the custom object name and the change event so for example let's say i do have a custom object name as task or i do have a custom object with the name as employee then my change event name will be the employee underscore underscore change event again here i am repeating there are two underscores not the one right it should be double underscore change event now as i said whenever we are sending the data by using the change data event one payload will be generated again in the demo i will show you how that payload looks like but let's try to understand what all different information is available in the payload so in the payload you do have the entity name whatever the entity that has been fired by using the change data capture event so you will get that entity name for example let's say the change data capture is fired on the account object so you can see the account name now what all the different record ids here you can send the cdc for more than one records at a time so here you can see that here you will get the array of record id next thing here is the change type you will get the change type information as well where you can see the different information like create update delete as well as the undelete right what all different change type operations that user have performed you can see all those four different operations here in addition to that there are few more information like the transaction key and the sequence number which will be helpful to identify the unique transaction whoever the user is committing the record we will get that user detail and after that as i said whatever the details that you have populated while performing those operations salesforce will send all those details to the user or to the external system moving towards the next part which is very important that is the subscription channel by default salesforce do provide the standard channels for all the objects that you are enabling as we have enabled the few objects here like you can see account contact task and the campaign salesforce have provided the few standard channel for all those different objects however salesforce also give you the provision where you can go and create the custom channels as well i will talk in more detail about the custom channels in the upcoming session in the today's session we will be focused more on the standard channel so in the case of standard channel in case you wants to see all the selected object then this should be your channel name where the channel name will be slash data followed by the change event again it is more generic in case you want to see all the objects like here you can see we do have more than one object in case you wants to subscribe to all the objects then you can go for the slash data slash change event right in case you are looking for a one object at a time then again here you do have the slash data that standard object name for example i only want to subscribe the account object although my system is exposing this different uh, objects but let's say my external system they are only interested in the accounts data they are not interested in all other data then what they can do in this scenario is they can go and subscribe to this single channel that is slash data and slash account change event right so this this is how it will look like same goes for the custom objects as well as i said the custom object name underscore change event in the naming convention so here you can see that slash data slash custom object name slash change event this is how the subscription channels will look like again as i said these are the standard channels provided by the salesforce you do not have to go and create these channels right for the custom channel definitely there are few additional steps that we supposed to do but we will take that in the upcoming session now again salesforce have provided the different tools that you can use to understand how the change data event work the first tool that i'll be discussing here is the streaming monitor again it's a free tool that is available on the app exchange that i will recommend you folks to get that downloaded in your org this streaming monitor tool 
will be helpful whenever you have to monitor all the streaming events with the help of this tool you can monitor the different events provided by the salesforce like the push topic generic platform events as well as the cdc right again there is a very detailed video published by the salesforce where you can understand how you can use the streaming monitor in the demo part i will also show you how you can use those streaming monitor but make sure that you are getting this app exchange tool downloaded in your org next is the emp connector emp connector is again another tool provided by the salesforce that you can use to test the change data capture event i have put the detailed steps as well how you can get that tool downloaded so the first thing that you have to do here is in case you want to use the emp connector tool you have to install the apache maven on your system so for that you can click here on the apache maven again i will put all those links in the video description so that you can refer it from there so you have to, you can go here on the apache maven and go to the install part oh uh, install is the correct link let me go back you can go to the download part yes go to the download part and download the zip file from here again you can also go it for the tar zip but i will recommend you go and download the zip file so for example if you go and click here a new file will be downloaded for you like this a new file will be downloaded for you after that what you have to do here is you can you will go and unzip this file again this is the zip file make sure that you are unzipping this file at any desired location on your desktop you can do it in the c drive or any of your drive right as simple as this after you have unzipped the file the next thing that you have to do here is you have to go and configure the environment variable after you have installed this apache maven and put it there you have to go and configure the environment variable again to configure the environment variable you have to go here and type the environment variable in the environment variable you have to go and configure the path variable so i am navigating to the system and configuring the path variable here in the path variable you have to make sure that you are adding the bin folder of the downloaded folder or the, of the unzip file right so for example let's say i have unzipped the file here let me show you let's say this is my unzip file right so what i have to do here is let me expand this what i have to do here is i have to navigate to the bin copy this complete path and navigate to the uh, environment variable click new and paste it here so you have to make sure that you are configuring the path variable and click on okay they have also put the detailed steps in their documentation as well right for example if you go here in the install path they have put all those detailed steps after you have done that what you should do here is to validate whether the maven has been installed correctly on your machine or not what you can do here is open the cmd and type mvn hyphen v if you are getting something like this like the apache maven in your machine that means it is completely configured on your org they have given the similar example right how you can conform it so i am doing the exact same thing as per the documentation so that is the second step that you have to do right after installing the maven now the next thing what we have to do here is we have to clone the emp connector on our local machine right to get that clone you have to use the git commands and get that clone so make sure that you also have the git on your machine if you are following this and also you have to make sure that you do have the java 8 on your machine as well so these are the few prerequisites that you have to work on before you go and download experiment this so as i said what you have to do here is you have to make a clone of it so let's say what i am doing here is on my machine again i am navigating there and here uh, i want to create this emp connector folder so i am creating one folder here emp connector demo i am navigating inside this folder opening this in the cmd so that i can get the exact path and now in this folder as i said the first thing that i have to do here is we have to perform the clone operation here again i will put this links in the video description so that you can refer it from there so once the cloning has been done 
uh sorry let me go to the correct window right once the cloning has been done the next thing that you have to do here is you have to go and put the cmp ed connector you have to go inside the emp connector folder so i am navigating inside this after that you have to execute the maven command and with the help if once you go and execute this command maven will generate the different libraries for you again this command will take some time to execute right uh, and after the maven have executed successfully few jars will be generated for you the next thing that you have to do here is you have to run the emp connector right to run this emp connector there are few things that you have to take care first you have to put the username here after that you have to put the password and followed by that you have to put the security token here after that you have to go and put the security token here and after that here you go and put the slash data and the event name creation of this link is very important folks to subscribe to the org as i said you have to go and put here the username followed by the password and the security token i hope everyone is comfortable how to generate the security token if you are not what you have to do here is to generate the security token you have to go here navigate to the settings and here you can go and uh, reset my security token right if you go and click on this button salesforce will send an email to you with your security token right so you can get the security token from here append it with your password again there should not be any space in between the password and the security token and there it should be a username space password followed by the security token followed by the slash data and followed by the event right so let me check if this has been installed so this has been installed for me successfully right you can see that this has been installed for me successfully now the next thing we have to go as i said we have to go and execute that command i already created that command for this demo so you can see that here i am subscribing to the event uh, i have put the java jar slash emp connector snapshot my username space password followed by the security token slash data followed by the event name as well let me zoom this so that you guys can see right username space password followed by the security token slash data followed by the event name now you can see that i am subscribed to change data event so you can see that i am getting this subscribe subscribe subscription to the account dot change it so whatever the subscription that uh, whenever i go and fire any event from my org this emp connector application will get that data so let's go and perform the demo on this so again let me go to my slides so let's go and perform the demo to validate whether my functionality is working as expected or not as i said you have to go and install the streaming monitor application so first let me open the streaming monitor from here again you just have to navigate to the app exchange and open the streaming monitor it will open a new tab for you with the help of this streaming monitor what you can do here is you can subscribe to the channels as well right for example in case you want to subscribe to all the channels you can do it from here in case you want to subscribe to the specific channel that also you can do it from here let's say i want to subscribe to a specific channel let's say i want to subscribe to the um, uh standard channel because as of now we are not dealing with the custom channel right so what i am doing here is i am selecting the standard custom channel that is the change data capture event after that i am selecting the event that is the account change event you can see that it is automatically taking those events right and i am clicking on the subscribe as soon as i subscribe something i will get the subscription list here right i will get the subscription list here now whenever i go and perform any operations on my data i will get the uh, my event here so let's go and do that so before i go and do let me quickly go and duplicate this so that we can see the changes side by side let me also split my screen into the two so that at the run time you folks can observe the changes let me go to the accounts tab let me create a new account i am creating the account here with the name as take journey with ankit putting the rating as hot 
right? And again, definitely you can go and put all the other details as well, but let me keep it simple for now. So you can see that my account has been created. And another thing that you can see here is to my subscribe event, we are getting one dot here, right? So it, it can show me which event has been fired and what time has been fired. The advantage with this uh, app exchange product is you can also go and filter it in case you are subscribing to more than one event. For example, let me go and subscribe to one more event here. For example, here I go navigate to the change data capture event. Also, let me go and subscribe to the contact as well. Contact change event and clicking on subscribe. So here you can easily observe what all different events has been fired. So let me go and fire the one more event and this time on the contact object. Uh, sorry, uh, let me go and fire this on the contact object. Let me split the screen correctly. For example, this time I'm doing the modification here. So what I am modifying here is, uh, let me modify the email address from test to uh, org, right? And clicking on save. You can see that I am getting another event here because I have subscribed to these two events in my application. I am getting these two different dots here. Now, you, if you want to look only for one channel, you can also go and filter it from here. Again, a very helpful application, very useful whenever you want to perform the monitoring of the events. Definitely in the testing, it is very helpful. Now, you can also go and click on this event and you can see the complete payload structure here. Right? If you go and click on this event, you can see the complete payload structure. The payload structure that we have discussed here right you can see the similar kind of a payload structure here you can see the similar kind of a payload structure here right if you don't want this kind of a graphical view you can, if you are comfortable with the tabular view you can also switch to the tabular view as well again you can get the same thing from here right you can see that when the event has been fired what is the replay id and what is the event details you will get complete details from here so very helpful uh, tool folks if you go over the recording uh, as i said this one you will be get, you will get the complete picture of the streaming monitor application that you can use i will definitely recommend you guys to go over it one more time in detail and try to play with this app exchange product another application that we have configured is the EMP connector and we have subscribed here with the uh, we have subscribed here to the account change event right you can see that when we have done the, some changes to the account object we are getting this payload if you want you can copy this payload and put it on your VS code as well let me go here and put it let me go and create a new file selecting a language as JSON it is not formatting let me go and try to format this right you can see that a complete payload that we have seen there what all different fields that user have populated along with the events right on what object we are performing the operation right what operation that user is performing at what time user is performing the operation all those details will be available here right so you can also go and monitor one more time in case you guys have missed. So let me go to the account and this time I'm performing the modification on the account and the changes that I want to do here is let me go here and populate the annual revenue as $500 for example and putting the ticker symbol as TJWA and clicking on save. Right. Again, if you go here, you can see that one more schema has been received. Right. And this time it is for the update operation. Previously, it was for the create. Now, let me go and replace this with the update. Again, let me go and format this document. You can see that this is time it is for the update. And we have modified the annual revenue field. We are getting that field here. Right. This is how you can use the standard 
channel to subscribe to the events as well again if i take you back to the slides one more time we also discussed that in case you want to in case we have to subscribe to all the standard channels definitely we have subscribed to the one event here in case you have to subscribe to all the channels then we can use the slash data slash change events so that whenever any event has been published everything will be notified so what we can do here is we can also go and subscribe to the all channels as well so to do that again you have to navigate to the streaming monitor uh, let me close this navigate to the streaming monitor let me go and refresh this page one more time and you can also go and subscribe to the all change events as well it's very simple what you have to do here is subscribe to all channels sorry subscribe to a channel this time again change data capture here you have to go and select the custom channel right and here you can go and type the slash data slash change event so whenever you are performing any operations on the data here you will get the notification same thing you can also do in the emp connector as well in the subscription url for example if i take you here here what we have to do here is in case you have to perform the subscription uh here rather than we go and use the slash data slash account change event you can change that with the slash data slash change event and you will get the similar kind of a behavior so let me go back one more time and we will make the changes now so now we are subscribed to the change events again i am making some changes here let me change the account name to gen point and clicking on save you can see that we are getting one more event here right so you can subscribe to more than one events by using the standard channel you can subscribe to the specific event also by using the standard channel that's all i do have folks for the first part on the cdc i hope you got some learning from the today session you have understood what is cdc what is the difference between the streaming api and the rest api in what scenarios you should go for the cdc and i do recommend that do practice the cdc as well by using the different tools that i have recommended i will put all the links in the video description so that you can refer it from there get that installed on your machine and do some hands on in case you do have any queries any question you can always let me know in the comment section thank you have a good time bye bye